Okay, you've just finished a 4,000-word e-learning voiceover project, and you send it to the client. They love the interpretation, but they tell you that the name that you read is not pronounced Smith, but Smythe. Oh, no, do I have to record this entire job again? No! This is a job for pickups. Hello, I'm William Williams, and this is Voice Over Virtuosity. So what is a pickup? A pickup is simply re-recording only the sentence in which the mistake is made. But you have to be careful, or your pickup will sound like this. It's very important to make sure that the sound of the pickup matches the original recording and does not stand out. So how do you do this? Here are some suggestions to help you match the sound of your pickups to your original recording, so they are not obvious when the listener hears your read. First of all, you want to aim for consistency in your recording. This starts way back when you choose your recording gear and equipment settings. The simple rule for this? Keep it simple. I used my Sennheiser mic for this. Then I read it through my preamp with this EQ setting. Then in my recording software, I used noise reduction. I then used a de-esser, and then I EQ'd the recording. Then I compressed my voice, and then I normalized the voice, etc., etc. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing any of these steps, but if you don't duplicate each step exactly when you re-record, the sound of the new recording will sound different. So how do you prevent this? Try to eliminate as many steps as possible. Do you really need to use the oral exciter, declicker, and bass boost? <laughs> Probably not. Experienced engineers often say, just because you can doesn't mean you should. As far as your equipment is concerned, I'm a big believer in set it and forget it. Unless you have a compelling reason not to do this, always use the same mic. Use the same mic distance and the same gain setting. If your mic goes through a preamp, don't touch those knobs. Find a good position for them and leave them that way. The same idea works for your recording software. If you're going to use noise reduction or compression or a limiter or normalize, use the same settings each time. If your software doesn't record those settings, then write them down on a piece of paper. But even with these cautions in place, you still might find the recording sounds completely different. This is because there are several variables that you must be aware of to match the sound of your original recording. Let's start with a microphone. Obviously, use the same microphone to re-record. Duh. But even though you're recording with the same mic placement, you might find you get a difference in the sound. This is because all unidirectional microphones have what is called a proximity effect. As you get closer and closer to the microphone, the tone changes and the sound of your voice will become bassier and bassier. So when you're working with the original recording, make a note how far you are from the microphone and duplicate that distance when you're re-recording. Also make sure you're not off axis when you record for the second time, not higher or lower or to the left or the right. So that takes care of the mic. But what about Mike or Sally? What I mean is, what about the variables in your voice? We have four parameters in our voice, pitch, volume, the tone, and the speed. Pitch is whether your voice is low or high. Volume is whether you're loud or soft. The tone of your voice can be mellow or bright. And of course, you can talk fast or slow. You have to match all of these aspects of your recording to sound like the original recording. 
First, record the new sentence and listen to it. Is your voice higher or lower than the original? Are you speaking louder than the original recording? Or do you have a brighter sound to your voice? And how is the pacing? Is it the same? Use this analysis to make sure the new recording sounds like the original. It can also help to first read along with your original recording. This is because your muscles will remember how the original performance felt and try to match that vibe. Here's a few more suggestions that will help. If you only have to change one or two words in a sentence, don't try to change only those words. Often when we talk, we connect words together. This is called eliting. So if you want to change Mr. Smith in the sentence, here is the information for Mr. Smith, and you just try to replace Mr. Smith, you'll probably find that you're cutting off the word for. So always do pickups of a complete phrase or a complete sentence so it sounds smooth. If you're recording a sentence in the middle of a paragraph, it also helps to read the sentence before that sentence so that the read flows naturally and doesn't jump. There's also a point where pickups just don't make sense. Suppose you have a one paragraph read and you have to do five different pickups in the paragraph. At that point, it just might make sense to reread the whole paragraph. So pickups are a great tool to save time and eliminate frustration in auditions and in jobs, and make you more efficient in your voiceover work. We all make mistakes, but in voiceover, you can correct them and no one will ever know. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications when new videos come out. And for more information on all things voiceover, visit alisocreek.net. I'm William Williams. Thanks for watching. And remember, keep talking.